So today I'm talking to Birkin Ericon. I got that right? Close enough? Perfect. All right, great. He's with Hydro Mix, and I found out about this product a couple months ago, and I thought it was kind of intriguing because this is a, uh, a different technology from traditional glycols, guys. So this has to do with, you know, you're running, there's gazillions of systems out there that are running propylene glycol, ethylene glycol, PG, EG. Or water. And, uh, yeah, I thought this was a really interesting product because it's based on nanotechnology and nanotechnology is very interesting. We, uh, back in my chiller days, we used to build uh, process chillers for companies that develop nanotechnology products. Anyway, so Birkin, welcome to the show and tell me, um, give us a little bio on you and tell us about, you know, uh, how Hydromix came about. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Martin. You bet. Well, make, 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 it a, make it a elevator pitch. What Hydromix is, Hydromix is a nanotechnology product. It's a nanofluid. And, um, I was doing a lot of business consulting in Europe, and they hired me as a consultant, Hydromex, back when I was in Europe. And uh, first, I had, believe it or not, I had uh, very much interest in nanotechnology back in the day when we had the oil factory, my father and I. And I knew a lot of things about nanos, but back in the day, they were super expensive. This is 2008, 2009. As technology advances, so is the, the, the making of nanoparticles became super cheap now. Back in the day, it was super expensive. So we pretty much didn't do much, but I learned a great deal of them. And when they introduced my technology, I said, too good to be true, right? This is, they cannot do the things that they claim and they will do. So, um, well, it became true. I invested in a company, my capital, and we became an American company. Now we have a factory in New York. We're New York based in uh, Queens. We have a couple of offices in the city. And then this became uh, one of the uh, leading technologies for HVAC industry to fight carbon emissions. So that's where I guess uh, the whole conversation pretty much boiled down to. And because HVAC industry has reached, reached limits where they can go from here is nobody knows. Uh, so we're looking at other technologies besides the HVAC. So now we're in the heat transfer business because every HVAC unit at the end of the day is a heat exchanger, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we add a lot of value and reduce um, consumption of the associated HVAC uh, equipment. So this product is a, a drop-in, if you will, for let's let's say create a scenario here. You've got a data center, you've got a commercial office building, something like that that's running a large tonnage, 500 and up, uh, yep. centrifugal chiller. And, you know, you what you're saying is this nanotechnology, you have the ability to to drain down the existing glycol, whether it be PG or EG in these systems and drop in your product at the same concentrations, pretty much. And they'll be able to achieve what as far as uh, improvements in. Um, Absolutely. In, yeah. Yep. Martin, um, we're not only beating glycol. We're beating water. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do have a environment product declaration document, which was all the data was verified and certified by a panel of experts led by a gentleman professor by the name of Thomas Gloria, who mm -hmm. happens to be the director of Harvard University. Mm -hmm. So um, the technology or the science behind HydroMX is is well known to the world. The, the, there are main hurdles with the technology, not with the product, but the technology. And the first main problem is the toxicology. It's mm -hmm. not that the nanofluids work. They all work to a certain extent, but can they clear toxicology guidelines put forward by FDA? That's the key. We're the only nanofluid company on the planet that cleared FDA regulations. And that so is you, we're the only commercial one out there. So you could literally dump this stuff down the drain and you don't have an issue, huh? Well, well, yeah, ethylene you cannot dump down the, down the drain, but propylene, hydromix, yes, you can just drain it. Mm -hmm. now, as a matter of fact, not only you can drain it, 
but we have incidental food contact clearance. Mm -hmm. That means if a certain amount of Hydro MX drops your meal, you can eat it. Right, well. <laughs> <laughs> I did one time, but. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's yeah. so interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at your website here. And what kind of caught my eye when I was doing the workup for this show was your uh, case studies, right? And you've got a lot of them in here, surprisingly. You've got office buildings, data centers, government, and public uh, health care and schools. Yeah, Mom, many... this, yeah, this is uh, this, 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 this case studies that we have here. Now, yeah. our installations, obviously, we have hundreds of installations globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, only India now, we have over 50 case studies. Mm -hmm. And the reason India is, is kind of be, become a workhorse, in, India did not require the stringent FDA uh, regulations clearance. So NDA had a kind of lead start on, 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 on US. Mm -hmm. So, and we're not, as you see, we're not sharing any, any Indian case studies here. Um, right. Well, again, with toxicology, the main hurdle is the engineering society. Engineering society yeah, that is, is a big problem with, with new technologies. But yeah, you know, it's, I get it because it's, I guess your challenge is making connection with what I call early adopters, right? So these are, these are individuals that, you know, are open to, you know, taking the risk, if you will, of going in with a, a newer product. You know, glycols have been around, glycol heat transfer fluid in the mechanical world have been around forever. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty widely accepted that, you know, this is what you use if you want to have freeze protection, right? Yep. And uh, so I, I get it. I have a patent on economizer technology for process chillers. Beautiful. And it just took forever to get, you know, the yeah. engineering community to accept yeah. it, right? It's just, we, yeah, with, with nanotechnology, there are, um, I may, I have, if, if I may, uh, I have every, every word you're saying, I have maybe 10 sentences to add, unfortunately, because um, I'm sitting in the um, committees in New York uh, for new technology, white carbon, right? New York's biggest carbon generator in the buildings, not the cars, right? Mm -hmm. And Manhattan obviously is, is, is a, has major problems, and now that the government is telling all the building owners to reduce their carbons, um, they don't know how. How in the, in the world a building, you know, it doesn't have to be as big as Empire State, right? One tenth, we have any building over 50,000 square feet, how are they gonna do it, right? It's, it's, this, this is why we come in, the new technologies, and engineers, unfortunately, they're still looking at the old books. The formula for a nano uh, fluid efficiency was written by a gentleman named Maxwell in 1881. And they're still using the same formula, which has nothing to do with what we do. Back then, they didn't have nanoparticles. They had micron-level particles at best. So, Burke, and what you're talking about, though, when you say carbon footprint, let me make sure that I'm understanding this correctly. So what you're referring to is the increase in, in heat transfer uh, will reduce the runtime hours on the equipment. So less energy consumed means less energy needing to be generated, uh, and so on. So that, that's the, that's the key of what you're talking about when you're saying carbon footprint, right? I can give you examples if you want. For example, yeah. you have, um, we're, we're right now in the state of Minnesota. One of our, um, founder companies, not founder, investor companies are operating. Um, the graciously state of Minnesota put aside Big, good chunk of money to test hydromix, right? The first installation was in a government building on a chiller application. One chiller, dedicated chiller to one air handling unit. Simple, it could not be simpler than this, okay? Mm -hmm. Is it this but, one on, uh, on the uh, That's the right loop. Right that's here? the heat recovery loop. That's the heat recovery loop, for example. Okay. Oh, there's, so there's no heater, just a straight um, uh, heat exchanger um, interaction. So in this case, I'm going to make, wrap it up really, really easy for you. You have a chiller, pumps up, you know, 44 degree water, right? 54, 44, that's the setup. Goes directly to an air handling unit, only serves one area, one space. What you're seeing with Hydromix is increased delta T on the air handling unit. So what happens, the Q 
famous Q calculation, mass times delta T times, right? Especially in this case, there's no specific because it's water to air. So you have CFM times delta T is your VTU pretty much, right? So you have the same VTU with what now? Less fluid because delta T is wider, right? So what happens? The return temperature, return fluid, bypass valve closes down, return temperature to return fluid is now cooler, so delta T on, the, on your chiller is lower. What happens? Your chiller runs less. Okay. It's a very, this is one of the scenarios that one day, once the engineers hired by the state of Minnesota saw this, they could not believe it. They understood, oh, now we know what you're doing. So behavior of the chiller changed, air handling unit changed, even in, in some terms, CFM of the air handling unit decreased because this, they were satisfying the room and at a faster pace because of the wider delta T's. Well, and that, that actually, well, this is kind of making my head spin a little bit, right? So <laughs> I knew, I knew. Yeah, so yeah, if you have less runtime on a chiller, fully loaded chiller, if you have less runtime on it, then I guess in theory, I mean, you guys haven't been around long enough to really probably capture this data, but you know, according to ASHRAE, these mechanical machines will last 15 to 18 years, obviously longer uh, if they're, uh -huh. if they're um, you know, well-maintained. So in theory, if they're running less, then well, there's sort of a, that, yeah, then you have a reduction in, not only in, reduction in energy usage, carbon footprint, but I guess you could make an argument, right, for lower maintenance cost and potentially uh, a better return on your capital investment, right? Because because the machine will maybe last a little bit longer, right? Martin, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what we do. And that is why OEMs do not like us. Mm -hmm. Because we make their products last so much longer. A compressor, a manufacturer give you 20,000 hour you know, hey, runtime. Hey, you know what? Your compressor is gonna last so much longer that they don't have to replace it. So now, now you're understanding why we're having so much issues with the OEMs. That's exactly why. Hmm. And 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 uh, we are now getting demand from the end user. End user demand is gonna change everything. And now that the carbon became a big problem for buildings. And especially cities like New York City, they want to they want to electrify this industry. They want to move away from fossil fuels, no gas, no oil, no none. They want to use only heat pumps for both heating and cooling. Right, they're doing that in California. Yep, yeah. same thing. What's going to happen? Those heat pumps are are not even close to pump up 180 degree water that their infrastructure is set up for. Mm -hmm. So they need products like ours. They want to get creative by adding, by taking a lot of rentable space, by adding water tanks to make ice capture heat from that process to, to influx that into the buildings. This whole thing is with the, with the electrification movement. That actually, that is global, by the way. This is not only New York. I'm, we're seeing this same in Netherlands. We're seeing the same in, in um, Germany especially now with what's going on with Russia. Okay, so now you understand where, where, why we are sitting in the center of all these movements. That's why I don't have time to, to answer calls anymore. People calling, they want to learn more about our technology. Yeah. And we, we are guaranteeing 20% efficiency on any kind of HVAC equipment, closed loop HVAC equipment. We are guaranteeing it. So, Birkin, okay, so let me, let me kind of, I'm, I'm putting my, my, uh, my business owner technician <laughs> hat on now, all right? So, you're telling me that this product, if you've got a, uh, a large uh, industrial or large to medium-sized brewery, let's just do that. Huh? Uh, you got a brewery, Budweiser, big guys, they use these monster chillers. Yep. And let's just say, you know, they're, they're running a 50-50 mix of, Propylene glycol, PG. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So you're telling me that you can put this product in the same concentration, right? 50-50 mix, and you can provide the same heat transfer. Excuse me, scratch that. You can provide the same 
uh, freeze protection. So 50-50, that gets you down to minus 30 on a PG system. You guys yep. will give about the same freeze protection performance. We, we increase that too. Oh, the freeze protection. What, so what would your freeze point be at 50-50? It's Water. probably around the 35 minus. Okay, minus 35. Okay, that's good. And then this product minimum, you're saying, will provide a 20% better heat transfer uh, performance than than water. Not only we're, we're, we're saying that, we're guaranteeing that, and also we're backing that up with a guaranteed three-year ROI. So oh, we're... we're that's my other question. <laughs> yeah, so it's not, it's not only we're guaranteeing your efficiency, we're guaranteeing the ROI, and let me take... Uh, the, let me just increase the ante up a little bit more here. Not only we're saying that, but we're only also giving you a guaranteed savings contract, guaranteed performance contract. So if the fluid does not perform, we're taking it back, which never happens, obviously. We're putting whatever you had it before. Yeah, okay. Well, that's certainly a pretty compelling, uh, you know, argument. I guess, the again, the trick is is getting getting the word out, you know, uh, about about what you're doing. So have you... Uh, what's your what's your target client for this particular product, Brooke? And like, who who are your early adopters that you've discovered so far? Well, that's another great question. Thank you, Martin. The early adapters are usually the um, the end users who have problems. You have um, we're not only look here is here is let me just take two steps back. When I increase your efficiency, you can either increase your COP, you cannot save money but increase production. For example, we were working with, um, I don't want to name the companies, but we're working with global level um, uh, plastic injection companies, right? They mm -hmm. make bottles. You know, the, the bottleneck of every technology, for especially in, in plastic injection, is the cooling time. You have this big mold that you have to cool them up. Once you, once you, you know, liquid polyurethane goes in there and you have to, you know, cool it. Average, for example, bottle uh, for Coke takes about 10 to 11 seconds to cool down. We're, we reduce that to nine seconds. Well, yeah, because you have more heat transfer. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So there is, so we're not saving money here, but we're increasing production capacity of a 24/7 running factory by 10%. What does that mean? Sure. Hey guys, quick announcement: If you have not stopped into our website at skilltraderescue.com. Please do that on the home page here. You will see that we have the join the movement email list. If you haven't signed up, please consider doing that. We have some amazing guests lined up for the podcast. I'm going to be getting the stories out of successful technicians and business owners in skilled trades. These are not just HVAC people. These are going to be people be from across the skilled trade spectrum. And my hope is that I'm going to be able to draw out of these people the things that have worked in their careers amazingly well and the things that if they had a chance to talk to their younger self, what they would tell them not to do. So I want to share all that stuff with you. And if you sign up, you're going to be the first to know when we drop those new podcast episodes. Also, coming soon, we have the BEST workshop. It's a five-day automated email workshop. However, you're going to give content to us through that workshop. You're going to get one-on-one -on -one feedback from our instructors, instructors, and we're looking to better your career. Uh, I've been teaching the BEST process for many, many years, about two decades one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm going to be trying to do that uh, to the masses through this workshop. It's totally free. All you got to do is sign up, and as soon as you do that, you'll get alerts on your email as soon as these new podcasts come in as well as the BEST workshop. So if you check it out, I will put a link to the website on the show notes for this episode today. So check it out. You know what, you know what that means. Right. So right. it's the same thing for, same thing for that uh, we, is our, our very famous Virginia Polytechnical University case study. They had a problem. They had an AI required huge server uh, power and NASA donated 12 um, uh, chill door rack, high density uh, units, which is a 50 kW. But mm -hmm. guess what? You have where do you have NASA? Houston, we have problem. Florida, launching pad. Virginia has has same climate as Buffalo, New York. 
which uh -huh. we had no idea. Buffalo, I mean, Virginia. I did not know that, but that makes sense. We and that's us over there. Um, this is they they came up with this take the the AI with limited space. They put glycol in there. They had dry clothes on the roof. Guess what happened? No more 50 kW, right? Mm -hmm. And we were working with Oak Ridge National Lab at the time for um, you know different heat pump technology. Anyway, so uh, he, Oak Ridge National Lab recommended us to use, and they never questioned it. They purchased the fluid, installed it. This is 2017, and we were just starting back in the day. I was like, oh my God, Virginia Paul Technical is asking for product. We're rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is going to be a phenomenal thing. And since then, they predicted Ebola virus's periphery, safe periphery, with this same AI that Hydromix is cooling it. And that's pretty much our, our claim to fame so far. So you were out at Oak Ridge. Were you on the nuclear decommissioning side? Is that what you guys were on at Oak Ridge? Um, well, we, had, we signed a very strict NDA with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, we, they, they needed uh, help. Because they had to use glycol, right? Uh, and uh, you know how glycol gets, especially propylene, at cold temperatures, it becomes sludgy. Yeah, that, so that, we, that you, yeah, you're that you're you keep leading right into my questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay. So let, let's let's dive into that a little bit. Okay, so we we've uncovered that we can put this stuff in at the same concentrations. We get. Um, uh, for example, 50-50 mix, we have a negative 35, which is better than than uh, PG, at least. EG is probably close to that. Yeah, you, um, you yeah. all right. So let's talk about let's talk about viscosity, because that's the other issue. Like, if you've got a low temp, we'll go back to our brewery. My um, favorite. <clears throat> these my these guys, are, what's that? Martin, say no more. Let okay. me just jump into it real quick. Okay. How do you measure viscosity? Dynamic viscosity, right? Well, Cinepoise, but yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What is what is that? That is for Newtonian fluids. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is our fluid? Our fluid is non-Newtonian fluid. Now let me get into more, you know. Uh, yeah, put put that in English, would you? <laughs> paradigm. Yeah, thank you. Paradigm shift questions. With nanotechnology, and anybody can Google this. The real viscosity measurement methodology is apparent viscosity. What is apparent viscosity? Apparent viscosity is for non-Newtonian fluids, whereby the viscosity of the fluid changes under stress conditions. They call it shear stress. Mm -hmm. okay? So our fluid is a shear thinning non-Newtonian fluid. What that means is that under stress, which is under more pressure, you have, a, I love to give an Empire State example, which I'm seeing it from here, from my office. They have 26 inch risers going up on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. That same fluid that you're pumping is, and at the end of the day, is going through a half an inch pipe that you have on the right. coils. Right. That's where you, that's, that's the definition of a stress, okay, mm -hmm. in the fluid. Our fluid gets thinner as you imply more stress. And the reason for that is our particles that we use. And I can, although we have a trade secret, manufacturing process, we, we opted not to use patent industry, which they completely demolished. I'm sure you know why. Oh, yeah, um, I know about that, yeah. yeah. Um, we, the particles that we use are not metallic. Okay. You cannot use metallic particles in HVAC system. Right. Erosion is going to eat up everything. No, no, yeah, you're right. So, but then, okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, finish your our, thought. Our capacity levels are a lot less than um, what the uh, you, you you see on the mainstream uh, heat transfer fluids. You know, the number one names. Um, and I can tell you this from our case studies. This is versus water, not glycol. We add not more than three percent um, pressure drop on any standard pump. Okay, so I guess wow, that was a, that was a like a biochemistry lesson right there. Let me thank you. All right, so so I'm gonna break it down to because I'm a simple man. So what what we're talking about here is my my brewery application 
they're running, let's just, let, let's say they're running slightly above freezing. So let's say we're running 35, 38 degree glycol. OK, sure. so mm -hmm. at, at 35 to 38 glycol, uh, I don't have my chart here, but because that propylene glycol is getting colder, it's getting thicker. That's just an EG works not quite. It's not quite as bad as PG, but um, you're you're adding viscosity, which means you're adding pressure drop to all of your heat exchangers, which means you have to ramp up your VFDs on your pumps to overcome that additional back pressure. And what you're saying, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying that even though you have the freeze protection, like again, we'll use our 50-50, we have a freeze protection all the way down to minus 35, you're, as you get colder, you're not seeing that increase in pressure drop or, or, or viscosity. It, you're, it doesn't happen in nano, right? With, with okay. At, with propylene, let's start with propylene. Yeah. Propylene glycol is a trouble product. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure can. Applications. And um, and industry. Um, let me just take another two steps back. Um, governments, the, the decision makers on on what's toxic, what's not, what can be used, what cannot be used, they don't really understand this technology, right? Propylene, yes, you can, you know, it's it's better than ethylene, no doubt. But once you add inhibitors which you have to, yeah. to any propylene solution, that becomes non-toxic automatically. I mean, becomes toxic automatically. It was non-toxic, toxic now is toxic because of the inhibitors. Therefore, right. in New York now, you have to reclaim even propylene glycol solutions. Because of the nitrites, yeah. Okay. Because of the nitrites, the molybdates, the, the, the potassium phosphates, what have you. All right, they have to reclaim that now. Well, let me just go right now, go, go to an example. With breweries, which we work with a couple of them, okay, we they, we kept our promise. It was, again, engineers, the, their problem was they, they love to simulate things. N anything in technology is not simulatable. I don't know, is that a word? It's no good for them. You know why? Because they're, they're new breed engineers. Mm -hmm. And they play the simulation thing that there is no tomorrow. Unfortunately, the parameters of a nanofluid surface area increase. Ionic exchange capacities are not in the simulation programs. What you have is standard stuff, conductivity, specific heat, viscosity, and density. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. But the way nanofluids work, that's why every time I talk to a, a nuclear physicist, they get it immediately. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think is there a difference between a DI water and a regular tap water when it comes to heat transfer properties? Not really. I, as far as I know, it's just water with the with the ions pulled out of it. Well, they they pull out minerals. That's why there is no they yeah. call it ionic exchange, right? Right. Um, well, you just cost your 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 customer six percent efficiency. Yeah. By using DI water, DI water is no good. Nobody should be using DI water. Why are they oh, using no, it? No kidding. Because, because, because heat transfer, because because the um, the chemical uh, treatment companies can sell you more inhibitors. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the inhibitors, um, yeah, they, they need to be in there. I, the nitrite, especially nitrites, you know, are going to coat your pipes, right? And because um, most customers will fill these systems, the water component of their water glycol mix is just going to be water out of the tap. And depending on where the municipality gets their water from, you could be getting, I'm going to use a technical term here, a crap ton of minerals that come in with that, that water. And if you don't have a inhibitor in there with that glycol, you're going to destroy your plumbing right because that that stuff falls out of suspension and then it starts schwacking all the metals of all the systems and pretty soon you've got a, a yep. rusty system right so yep. you're saying that this nano stuff in it in its in itself provides the same plumbing protection if you will if they use city water and your product this nanotechnology is also going to prevent sloughing of the uh the ferrous metals in the system, correct? Yes. 
I'll take you one step further again. None okay. of the, again, name names with glycol industry has the uh, the level of corrosion protection that we having. Mm -hmm. The toughest corrosion test on the planet is a build cert test for old boiler systems in the UK. And mm -hmm. NSF America, NSF.org, acquired build cert, and we have a build cert corrosion certification. And okay. we're not using nitrate. We cannot use nitrate. We, our main uh, chemical is molybdate, and molybdate is a superior than, than not nitrate, also expensive. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I have an exciting announcement. We just recently made some updates to our three most popular online courses at processchilleracademy.com. If you're a technician that's looking to improve your skills a little bit, maybe get some specialized training to be of more value to your customers and your employer, or if you are an employer, a contractor that is looking to augment your existing in-house training with online training that can be accessible from any device, this is a really great opportunity. Just go to processchilleracademy.com, just scroll down on the home page and you will see the course area. If you go into the course page, you will see that we are currently for a limited time, we have a promo code of Chiller Pro that will save you 25% on e any one of these courses. So I hope you check it out and I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. So um, how about, okay, so let's say we have a customer that's, that's uh, willing to be an early adopter of this stuff, right? Um, what, what's the, what is a good, a good starter? So let's say you've got a large industrial client and it, here, here's, and I'm sure I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but you've got a large facility manager, a Microsoft building, uh, an Intel building, a big shopping mall, something like that. That facilities manager, you know, he doesn't know you guys, you know, he may know one of the other manufacturers I won't mention. And, you know, what's a good channel for someone to test out this product, uh, do a live demo test on this without the the risk? Because, you know, these facilities managers, you know, if you've got a, like a million square feet, you're not just going to willy nilly take out all the glycol. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let, let, let's, first of all, let, let's start with the risk. Um, yeah. We have we have a full product liability insurance that covers every piece on any building that Hydromix touches. What does that mean? Um, we have something nobody has. We're, we're, we're not only backing up our efficiency claims, but we're also backing up our corrosion or any other system damage with a full liability product insurance, which we, we carry for over 10 years now with zero claims. Yeah. Zero. And I, I, I think is, yeah. yeah. The, the, challenge, the challenge is, well, we have our website. We have an info dot at hydromix.com email. Anybody can drop an email. We're getting over um, 50 emails a day now. Um, our, 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 our people, we have pretty much distributor globally, distributors um, everywhere, pretty much uh, on modern world. Um, we, with some of the distributors, we'll, we'll, we'll contact you and, um, and, and we'll take it from there. Mm -hmm. And Mark, believe it or not, just yesterday, after uh, three months of uh, collaboration, we just signed the very big contract with a marine engineering company mm -hmm. called Avantis. And I can come out and say it right now. And to my surprise, those ships, container ships, cruise ships, they make up around 5 to 10% of the entire global carbon emission. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we're covering also the seas, not only land. So that's yeah, that's, that's how it works. Okay, <laughs> so let's say uh, again, I, I'm I'm really speaking to the facilities managers out there. Um, so let's say you get a a facility that you know they want to they want to go ahead and give this this product a shot. Um, they get approvals to do it, and they. Uh, What's the what's the the transition process? I mean, it, it's going to be very difficult on an existing system to get all the existing water and propylene no, glycol. No, no. You know, what's the process on that? It's not it's not difficult at all. Actually, the reason why we're so popular right now because Hydromix is a non-intrusive technology. 
Okay. All you have to do is swap the fluid. Swapping the fluid for many buildings in New York City is a yearly, twice yearly event. They mm-hmm. they clean their systems and they refill them. Right. Right. So so if there's a if there's a valve that get, gets left closed and you've got a couple of heat exchangers that for some reason they didn't drain down, still contain the regular PG or EG water mix. That's um, fine. We can that's not a problem. No, okay. no, we can. Um, um, Martin, we've been doing this for, for over 10 years now. We know what we're doing. And then the process is going to be as follows. Um, we reach out to them, sign a simple NDA. They will forward us their energy bills. And, and we're going to calculate the volume of the system. And we're going to give them a proposal based on the volume of the guaranteed ROI. Uh-huh. Just, like we did, just like we did with the Empire State Buildings. We just uh-huh. sold 30 feet of roadway. If anybody is familiar with Manan, that's one of the iconic buildings. Uh-huh. We just the entire solar system with hydromix. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, this is interesting. So full disclosure, guys, to my audience out there, uh, before we recorded this session, I asked Birkin about uh, issues with the refrigeration cycle. And, um, and I'll, you know, I'll let you chime in here, Birkin, but the, the, the what, what I, I see here is that, uh, there is no issue according to the documentation. I went through some of the case studies that uh, Hydromix has on their site, and it, they do have this stuff running in a lot of process uh, chillers out there. And so I'm assuming that there's no issues with the expansion devices dealing with the extra capacity um, of, that's coming out of the heat transfer fluid. So that's good to know. I mean, th- did I pretty much... Nail what we talked about before we hit oh, record. Beautifully, Martin. Thank you so much. That's exactly correct. Okay. Uh, one of the um, I can give give you one of our other clip to fame case studies with Slovakia. Slovakia Continental Tire Factory. They had an issue with their chillers not being able to maintain the, the set temperature that they require. They heard about us. We gave them the fluid. This was four years ago. Um, they're adding another hydromix loop to their factory next month so not only that we have repetitive customers for example we have this um, uh, generic um, drug manufacturing company called microlabs out of india mm-hmm. they installed the first factory this was six years ago they measured and verified it they dated themselves they measured it for one full year now they installed every other factory without even measuring it they have five factories so I guess repetitive customers speaks for for themselves. Right. If we had not if we had not accomplished what we we are promising, I guess we would not be getting repetitive customers. Yeah. So uh, is there a minimum? Uh, what's the availability on this stuff? I mean, have you had any supply chain issues or anything like that? Oh man, that's oh, <laughs> oh that that tells <laughs> it all right there. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. With propylene glycol, uh, the lead time is currently four months. Ooh. With ethylene, we're, we're a lot luckier. We, we did um, some um, inventory already stocked up, but with propylene, we just ran out um, because we had a big customer now out of Minnesota. And it uh, looks like Minnesota is converting all these schools to probably hydromix pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're just getting a lot of demand for propylene product. Uh, okay. But propylene is, 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 is really hard to get right now. Yeah. It was easier in Europe because Russia – has the propylene manufacturing facilities, but now that's going to be problematic too, the way it goes. Yeah, yeah that rushes out of the loop for a while. No pun no. intended. Um, so what, what's the, I, I guess what I want to find out now is we have a lot of process chiller companies out there. And when I say process chillers, I'm talking chillers that are under 150, 200 tons. You know, they're smaller for, you know, specific mission processes mm-hmm. out there and do you guys assuming you know once your supply chain challenges get resolved do you guys have a minimum or like you ship a concentrate which is pure right and then right. the customer okay that's that's a big deal so 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 they, they can buy a concentrate and then they they mix it within the equipment what's the minimum quantity like if i've got a little chiller manufacturing company which i used to have and I want to start promoting this product to my customers that are buying chillers from me. Can you buy this stuff in five gallon, 10 gallon, 55 yeah. gallon containers? That's, 
Yes, thank you, Martin. Yes, uh, we go down to five gallons. Uh, okay. we prefer to ship in totes. It, their totes right. is about um, one metric ton, which is about 250, 238 gallon, which, which, whichever the product is ethylene or propylene based. Uh, we do also uh, 55 gallon drums. Right. Uh, but we can we can pretty much I mean our, our factory is designed to to uh, address any quantities. Okay. Now the ROI though you're going to pay more per gallon of it. So you mentioned a three year ROI. What's the quantity you have to buy to get that kind of ROI? It's going to be more be, if you're buying smaller containers, I'm sure. That would be we don't go lower. If we're doing the engineering side of it, obviously we got to put some time into it uh, with our engineers. Uh, but we'll, we don't do that for for small projects. Anything less than uh, you know. Thousand gallons is, is not okay. appealing to. Okay, well that that makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. Well, this has been really educational, Burke, and I I um I think this definitely has merit. I think it should be considered. You know, I I guess I'm a little I, I'll, I'll remain hopeful that you find some some more early adopters. And, and, and again, once you get critical mass, you know, nobody wants to be first on something like this, right? Or not, very few people want to be first because they don't want to take the risk. But well, if you get it good, we, 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 we kind of pass that stage right now. We're okay. not we're not looking for early adopters. We're looking for building owners, uh, engineering companies, especially design engineers that mm -hmm. want to improve the their their designs. Mm -hmm. uh, we can lower the footprint of an equipment with right. with the natural fluid. And right. now let let me for retrofit. For retrofit end users that we have to swap the fluid, I have great news for them too. For data centers, any any glycol fluid, we can do now what we call an injection, Martin. Mm. Whereby we don't have to swap the fluid, but we rather inject around 5% volume of the system, what we call a techno package. Mm. We, we have over 10 case studies globally where we implemented this technology. And it's working marvelously. So, what do you mean by inject? So, you you, um, you basically are, are you purging the, the the regular traditional glycol and then injecting this stuff, or what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, let's say you have a data center, right? Right. Which I I cannot swap the fluid because of downtime is not is not ideal. It's not possible for most right. data. Centers, correct. So, what we do is we come in, we analyze the system. We're hoping that you're not your system is clean chemically. That oh, not, that's wishful thinking, but go ahead. <laughs> for data centers, we are more hopeful on that. Yeah, uh, they're, yeah. they're, they pay money, right, right. For, 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 for water treatments. So what we do is we take a sample of your fluid, we analyze it, we come up with the ideal concentration to, to inject, meaning to slowly, gradually dose in our techno package to your existing system with no downtime, and we're still guaranteeing you 20% efficiency. How about that? Well, wouldn't you be uh, so? Ha you're going to have to purge some of that fluid to put some of the new fluid in, right? There is no fluid now. It's only less than five percent of the entire volume I'm replacing. Okay. Okay, I see what you're doing. So they're going to have to drain down five percent. And we're, then we're and not then... taking care of everything. There's no draining down either. It's just a complicated, little complicated process. Depends what they have. Okay. Five percent. We did the lowest we did was around three percent. Yeah, uh, fluid. We're, we're taking some fluid out, and we gradually start putting in the nan nano package to okay. the system. Interesting. Interesting. It's a one day. It's a one day process for systems about, I would say, less than uh, five thousand gallons. Okay. There's a lot of systems out there like that for sure. Yep. Yeah. One day process. That's no downtime. So, uh, Birkin. So, wh where are uh, how do people find out about more? I, I've got your your website up here, uh, hydromx.com. So uh, if somebody wants to get more information about your products and your solutions, what do they do? Just go on to the distributor well, list? Or they, yeah, what's the yeah, best way? Contact us. Yep. Send, drop us an email. Okay. Don't call us. Drop us an email, please. Okay. Wow, that's really good. Well, gosh, I can't believe it's been almost – it's been 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank thank you so much. Is there any uh, last words you'd like to send out to our audience out there, Birkin? Um, they will be hearing about us in, in a grander scale and uh, 
pretty much 12 months, six to 12 months from now. And um, we're proud to be representing a nanotechnology. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I very much look forward to continuing to connect with you. Please don't hesitate to send me messages on LinkedIn. I'm on there all the time. Or you can reach out to me uh, on my email. I'm at mking at processdrilleracademy.com. And until next week, uh, when I give you the next installment, I uh, wish you a great week. And I will connect up with you again soon. Take care. Now, bye-bye.